Hi, I'm Clarissa Mosley, psychotherapist and psychologist and director of Calm Mind Psychology. How do you become a full expression of your true authentic self? With so many therapies out there, it's hard to understand which one will serve you the best. So in this video, I'm going to be describing Gestalt therapy and how it might help a couple of the more common presentations that people come into therapy for. So let's dive in. Gestalt is a complete body and emotion focused therapy that helps you heal and resolve unfinished business and um, old past painful dynamics that are recurring in the present in the now. The main aim of Gestalt is to help you raise your awareness, your awareness of self, how you operate in the world and how you might be remaining stuck. From there, we move into being more responsible, responsible for who and what we do, and that's the ownership part, but also more self-response able. That means I'm more able to respond to my own needs and my own self um, issues as they arise. So I'm trained in Gestalt therapy. I got my diploma back in 1996. How long ago was that? But Gestalt is one of the original therapies that many other therapies have blossomed from. True to its meaning, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, Gestalt was formed from several other different therapies back in the 1950s. Fritz and Laura Pearls got together and um, formed Gestalt therapy. So Fritz wasn't happy with the way Freud was very fixated on fixations and going back into the past. And, and so Gestalt is a very now, here and now focused therapy. Gestalt therapy also uses the phenomenological approach. So what this means is that rather than interpreting or analyzing, the therapist seeks to understand the subjective experience of the client and in so doing doesn't distort any of the information. It's also focused on the I-thou relationship. And this is different from the I-it relationship where we kind of see the other person as a, a um, not an equal. So in the I-thou relationship is where we want to connect in fully and be a human in the room with our client rather than being an expert. Um, Gestalt therapists will often bring in their own experience of what's going on. Um, and this is how people learn how to be in relationship. It's a relationship that heals. Gestalt roughly translates to mean the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. However, in the process of growing up, we do fragment into parts of self, the parts that are acceptable to our parents or our peers or our school, and the parts that are not. People are not seen as sick or dysfunctional through the lens of Gestalt, but of having made ad adaptations and developed strategies to deal with things that have happened to them or the relationships that they were in as children with the parent. And while we needed to develop these strategies to cope as children, what happens is they keep running and now we're adults, we don't necessarily need them anymore. But we get stuck in them and they're seen as repeating patterns that are desiring closure in the present. This is known as unfinished business in Gestalt. So it's the unresolved issues from the childhood, the unmet needs, perhaps um, relational traumas or traumatic experiences, or the ways that we had to adapt, you know, the parts of ourselves that we had to hide or deny and disown that maybe we need now in the present. Because we are always seeking wholeness. We are always seeking to complete the gestalt. We, we, we want to finish the unfinished business. And this is why therapy is making the unconscious conscious. But much of what we do is out of our awareness. So the, un, um, the unnecessary strategies that we developed in order to, to cope and survive as children keep habitually repeating in the now. And so by raising our awareness of what we are doing, how we are blocking our own growth forward, how we are repeating our unconscious patterns, by bringing this up into awareness, we have the potential to integrate these experiences and then the possibility of change. The main avoidances to growth are seen in the defense mechanisms of projection introjection, retroflexion, and confluence. 
Now I know these are big overwhelming words, so let's look at them one by one. Interjection is how we took on the thoughts, beliefs, and sometimes even feelings of others close to us without analyzing if they were ours or if we really believed that they were true. Projection is where we have a part of ourselves that we don't want to own. It's pushed away, it's disavowed. But what happens is that because that quality is actually part of us, we see it showing up in many different places in the world. And in effect, we project out onto the other people what is actually a part of ourselves. Retroflection is doing to myself what I would rather do to others, or doing to myself what I would like others to do for me. Now the retroflection is where the anger unfortunately gets turned back in on the self. And this can show up in self-blame or self-judgment or self-loathing, I'm a bad person, this is why people are angry at me. It can go to other forms of self-harm, um, unfortunately actual self-harm. A way of avoiding getting in full contact with ourselves or others is confluence. Now confluence is an interesting one, it's where we agree not to disagree. So we'll just go into agreement with what they're saying rather than standing up for ourselves and asserting what we would really like to do or what we really think. Now Gestalt therapy also works with polarities and polarities are like the opposite extreme of a behavior or a belief or a part of self. And one of the primary polarities in most people's personality is the split between that inner voice, that inner critic, what Gestalt therapists call the top dog, and the inner argument or the inner child or what the um, Gestalt therapists call the underdog. Now this is a split where we have that voice in our head telling us what we should and shouldn't have done and how we need to do this and that and it's kind of a bully, it's that inner critic voice, it's the conglomeration of parental values, judgments and directives that occurred in the greater landscape of the social situation. So this is kind of how we get socialized. So I've talked a little bit about how these things might have developed in childhood, but Gestalt is very focused on what is happening now. Because so many times we are either in the past, thinking about what we did, what happened, or we're in the future, thinking about what we could do and what's going to happen next. By actually getting in the present and looking at what we are feeling and experiencing in the now, this is the only point from which we can change. We cannot change the past and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So by being in the now, we get more of our energy back and we get more choice reinstated about how we are going to react, but we also learn about ourselves. And Gestalt therapy seeks to help you become full of self-awareness, self-responsibility in this way when you're aware of how you're interrupting your own goals, desires, natural urge to unfold and grow, when you are aware of these, you can take responsibility for them and you can also be more response able, able to respond to yourself and your own needs if you need to do that or able to ask for them to be met. So Gestalt therapy is not a set of tools and techniques because a lot of people know about the two chair dialogue and they know about the hot seat or they know about these little bits and pieces that they borrow from and think they're doing Gestalt. It's a whole system of how we flow through a cycle of contact and awareness which I'm not going to dive into because I think there's been so much theory in this already. But let's talk about the most famous technique in Gestalt therapy, the two chair dialogue. So how the two chair dialogue works is that we use another chair to either put a part of the client in there or a, a person in the client's um, world in, in relationship. So I'll describe each one of those. So I talked before about the top dog, underdog, and how you can have that dialogue between the bullying, you should, you shouldn't have done that, you're silly, you're stupid, whatever, and the underdog's like, yes, I know, I know, so you, I, I'm bad, I'm wrong. So what you can do is actually sit that bullying part, that inner critic part in one chair, and sit the the defensive one and the... And the um, 
the underdog, the sabotaging, but the conceding one in another chair and let them have it out. And it's a really good way to understand the dynamic that goes on in your head all the time. Again, I'm probably gonna make a video about this too. If I do, I'll link it in the description box below. Because these two chair dialogue dynamics are so informative. So I mentioned I was gonna talk about a couple of the common presentations that people come into therapy for and how Gestalt might work with that. Two main things that people present to therapy with are anxiety and or depression. Often they go together. With anxiety, we look at, through the Gestalt lens, we look at what are the inner conflicts within this person? Because when you've got two different parts of self at war within your own, mind you get a conflict you get a you get a friction and the friction itself can create this feeling of anxiety it's like being torn it can also happen when you're trying to make an important decision or you want to make a decision for yourself that you know might go against what you think is expected of you an example would be say the eldest son of a family has gone through two years of university and doesn't like it anymore and he wants to leave to pursue his acting career but there's a conflict within him because he knows that his highly professional driven parents are not going to like that so he's got the the part that wants to do what he wants to do and find joy in that and the part that knows what is expected of him and what he should do and there's a conflict in that and depression. So for a long time, psychotherapists saw depression as a suppression of an emotion. We know that anxiety and depression can have very biological bases to them, but we can also examine what might have brought on a shorter term depression. So when we look at suppressed emotions, these can be ones like anger or possibly unresolved grief. But we can also suppress our joy and our happiness. Perhaps you were brought up in a family that was very serious, very stern. There was never much laughter or frivolity or happiness or fun. So you learn to be a very stoic person. But as an adult, what happens is you've lost access to your joy. You don't know how to go out and have fun or be spontaneous and this can be problematic and it can cause a low-grade feeling of depression. There's a part inside that's sort of stuck and pushed down. So whether it's anger or sadness or, or grief or, or joy, it, it can, it's worthwhile to look at what emotion could be underlying and not being expressed and thus. So how can a therapist help someone navigate deep and tricky emotions if they haven't been there themselves? But the important element is that the Gestalt therapist has done their own work. So I was trained in a group situation. I had three years of experiential training within a large group, which really gave me the sense of not only how it felt to to be doing my own personal work as I learned the theory and practice, but also to see other people processing their emotional material. So the ultimate goal of Gestalt is wholeness in the form of maturation. You're not doing any of your childhood strategies anymore. You're in full awareness of all of the stuff that you do do that gets in your own way. And you're able to be responsible for that and responsible to yourself. And then you can let the natural process of growth and change unfold. But Gestalt is also a very good vehicle for spiritual growth. Because as Eckhart Tolle said, being in the now is also stepping outside of your ego and becoming the observer. And in the process of awareness of self, we do exactly that in Gestalt therapy. We look at the dysfunctional or the parts of the ego that are split off the, the parts of us that are stuck in earlier stages of development, our conditioning as a whole, all of the things that we were told that we were and not necessarily that were part of who we truly were. And so by working through the layers of the ego and the conditioning, we become more transparent. And this is exactly what enlightenment is. Ajishanti said it, enlightenment is the lightening of the ego so rather than the ego being this dense foggy bit 
with arguments, conflicts, split off parts, stuck bit, unresolved bits, unfinished business, um, blocked in our capacity for contact with self and other, repeating patterns, we can become more whole, we can become more integrated and, and we can make our ego far more transparent. And in doing this, we are growing spiritually because the ego is a chameleon. It will, it will shift itself into whatever shape that we think we want. The ego will do anything to avoid its own demise. So it's imperative in spiritual growth that we are also working on our ego with someone who is wiser and more knowledgeable about these things in ourselves. Because what happens if we try and do it alone? We will fool ourselves. So the skill of a good gestalt therapist is balancing this, this, this attunement, the phenomenological way of stepping inside your subjective experience of being empathic to that with enough challenging so that you don't you know, get away with your old tricks and continue to repeat the patterns that happened. And so this is how Gestalt is very relational. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on understanding more about Gestalt therapy, where it came from, what its basic principles and techniques are, and also how it might work to help you become a wholer, fuller, more mature, evolved person. So please, if you like this video, don't hesitate to express that like. Don't hold back in the contact with your finger and the like button. And if you are interested in hearing any of the other stuff that I've got to teach about and explain to you, please subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you again and helping you heal and understand yourself better in another video. Thank you.